In this video, I want to talk to you all about RDS Proxy, which is a newer feature announced earlier this year in June of 2020. And RDS Proxy is a great new feature for those of you that are already using RDS databases because it helps you manage your connection pool to your database endpoints. It simplifies your application by letting the proxy worry about managing those connections. So in this video, we're going to talk all about this new feature. And more specifically, we're going to talk about what is an RDS Proxy in some detail. And then we're going to talk about how it works through an example. And then finally, I'm going to talk to you about some example use cases where you may benefit from using RDS Proxy. So first of all, what is RDS Proxy? Well, RDS Proxy is essentially a middleman between you and your RDS instance. Uh, so typically when you're using an RDS instance, such as MySQL or Postgres, you connect directly to the instance endpoint. And then from there, you issue commands to your cluster, such as queries, updates, uh, so on and so forth. Now with RDS proxy, instead of connecting to that endpoint, you connect to a middleman endpoint, which in turn will be responsible for managing the connections to your database. So from your perspective, all you care about as a user is connecting to the proxy endpoint and the connections to communicate with the database directly are managed by the proxy service. Uh, so this means that RDS proxy handles all network traffic, which includes establishing, maintaining, and terminating connections. So essentially it maintains the connection pool for you when you're trying to communicate with your RDS instance. Now this is great from those of you that have lots of different uh, maybe applications that are communicating with the database because a classic problem of large applications is that you start hitting the upper limit in terms of the maximum number of simultaneous connections that a database will allow. Now using this new feature, you get to rely on this middleman to maintain an optimal number of connections and also use some advanced techniques to optimize throughput to your database. Uh, so one of the main benefits is that it reduces the database workload by requiring fewer connections. If you're no stranger to databases in general, you know that there is a overhead of maintaining a connection to a database from a client side. Uh, so usually we want to keep that number as low as possible without sacrificing anything in our application. Well, with RDS proxy, you get to maintain fewer connections because the proxy is maintaining those connections for you. So say for instance, if you have three application instances, they can all be connected to the proxy and the proxy can only be maintaining one connection to your actual database and maybe just reusing that one connection for the queries from the multiple different instances. I'll run through an example where I'll make this a little bit more clear in a few moments. Now, another main benefit is that RDS proxy simplifies application logic. Uh, usually this is handled by a library that you're using if you're connecting to your database from your application. So there is some overhead in terms of creating that connection, maintaining it for long periods, and then finally terminating it. So this is something your application has to worry a lot less about. And finally, it can be used with Postgres, MySQL, or Aurora in AWS. It can also be used for the MySQL and Postgres variants in Aurora. So that is an option as well. Uh, so that's it for what RDS is. Now let's move on to how RDS works. So first I want to show you an example of what this looks like from a classical perspective without using RDS proxy. So let's say that we have an RDS instance. It could be running maybe Postgres or MySQL. And we have our application client over here. Now in a vanilla kind of traditional setup, we would have our application client that would create and maintain a connection directly to our RDS instance. Now this isn't a problem, we're just consuming a connection on that instance, but it can become a problem if many, many different clients start popping up. They would all need to also maintain a connection to the database if they're looking to perform updates or read off of it in any way. Now if the number of applications and therefore the number of connections explodes too high, it may reach the limit on the number of connections your RDS instance can support, in which case you may see exceptions such as the dreaded too many connections exception. And then you, of course, go off to Google and try to figure out how to fix this problem. So this problem is what RDS proxy helps solve. So let's see how that can work. So let's say again, we have our RDS instance and we have our client application now. Now, instead of connecting directly to that RDS instance from our client perspective, we have a middleman here. And this middleman is the RDS proxy instance. Now, when you create your RDS proxy instance, a single proxy is only ever mapped to a single instance at a point in time as part of a Aurora fleet or individual Postgres or MySQL instances offered through RDS. But essentially a proxy is a one-to-one -one mapping of the right of an Aurora fleet. 
Um, so now instead of your instance communicating directly with the database, you instead communicate with the RDS proxy. And then on your behalf, the RDS proxy will connect to that database and then satisfy any queries or updates that come through from the client into the database. Now it's important to note here that when you create your RDS proxy, you get a new database endpoint that is dedicated to the RDS proxy and you still have access to the endpoints for the RDS instance or any read replicas that you have set up on your cluster. But now you just have the option to connect to your database by using the RDS proxy or by using the endpoints that correspond directly to the instances. In some cases, such as debugging, it may be useful to connect directly to the RDS instance as opposed to using the proxy itself. So now when we expand this diagram out a little bit and we add a couple more clients, you know, we're only adding two more here, but you can easily see where I'm going with this. You can have many, many clients that now, instead of connecting to the RDS instance, they are now connecting to the proxy. And now you're just maintaining a fewer amount of connections to your RDS instance. So for example, in this diagram, we have three applications that have three independent connections to our RDS proxy. And maybe it's enough for the RDS proxy to only maintain one connection to our RDS instance. This allows your RDS instance to consume fewer amounts of resources and you'll get better performance out of it in the long run. Now this works great if you have a single RDS instance, but how does it work if you have a fleet of instances? Maybe you have one write instance and a read replica or more than one read replicas. Uh, so if, say for instance, you have that scenario. So in this example, your top instance here would be your writer, which is sometimes also called the leader. And your bottom instance here will be the reader and which is sometimes also called the follower. And what RDS proxy does when it registers against your database is that it creates a concept called a target group. And all instances that are available in your Aurora fleet are members of this target group. However, RDS proxy will only ever maintain active connections to the writer instance in your target group. However, if that writer instance ever goes down for some reason, RDS proxy can quickly detect that the writer instance went down or the leader instance went down and detect that the reader now at the bottom here got promoted to being the writer and it can divert all connections and all requests coming to the writer that just went down and now that gets forward to the reader. So as a quick example, if this instance goes down here, and this instance no longer becomes the writer and this instance is the only one left it now becomes the writer what RDS proxy will do is it'll terminate the connections over here and then start forwarding the connections to the new writer in your cluster now the exact same concept applies if you have a multi AZ failover. So if you have a database that is in one AZ and you have a, a replica that's sitting in another AZ, if the database in one AZ goes down, you'll have an automatic promotion of the secondary to the primary, in which case RDS proxy will switch over all of its connections to the new instance and then divert all the traffic there. So it's great from a failover perspective, also makes it a lot easier when this does happen. You don't need to have any application logic in your code to detect these scenarios and to handle them gracefully. Uh, so we talked a lot about how it works, but like kind of how does it make these optimizations and why is this a good idea? Well, it uses a combination of different techniques to optimize performance to your database. And one of those techniques is called multiplexing, which is essentially session reuse for transactions. Uh, and then there's connection borrowing. And then finally, there's a concept called pinning. Now, these are more advanced topics that I'd suggest you read a little bit more about if you're curious. We're not going to go into them in this video. So that's kind of how RDS proxy works. Now let's talk about some use cases where it may be a good idea for you to use RDS proxy. Um, so the first one is if you have a very large fleet application, like I was mentioning before, if you have a lot of different application instances that are going to be trying to connect and query um, a single database, then you may run into that too many connections problem. So by using a RDS proxy, it essentially can act as a choke point for your traffic so that all of your traffic instead will be going to that proxy. And then the proxy itself can be responsible for maintaining the optimal number of connections to the database. So using Using this setup, you may have maybe a thousand connections to your proxy, but maybe only 200 or so from your proxy to your database. And this is great from the database perspective. You have fewer connections, so fewer overhead in maintaining those connections and therefore better performance for your database over the long run. Another very popular use case where this is a really good idea is if you're using a Lambda application. Now, the reason this is important if you're using Lambdas, and I have a whole video on what Lambdas are, by the way, if you're interested. Um, so the reason it's important is because Lambdas are serverless, so they can come up or down at any point in time. Now, with a very high throughput Lambda application, 
It's very possible for Lambda to spin up many hundreds, if not thousands of small instances to service the traffic that's coming in. Now, if within your Lambda application, you're making connections to your database instance, all of those different application instances may quickly exhaust the number of connections that your database supports and therefore result in these lambdas starting to throw exceptions to your callers. So if you switch over to using your RDS proxy, all of the requests will go through that proxy and the RDS proxy is elastic. It can support many, many connections far greater than what your vanilla database would be able to support. So in a sense, you get protected by RDS proxy in case your throughput rises to too high levels. So these are some use cases where I think you'll find some value in using RDS proxy. Thanks for watching. And if you enjoyed this video, please don't forget to like and subscribe. Thanks so much. And I'll see you next time.